What's up guys, welcome to another video. And today we are going to be talking about armor and clothing. The thing that keeps your pawns from dying of overexposure to bullets. Naturally, we will be talking about just vanilla base game mechanics, but if you want us to talk about vanilla expanded stuff or other modded gear like that, be sure to hit the like button. Let's set the goal at 3000. Alrighty, everybody got that? Let's get going. What is apparel? So I don't think I need to explain what clothing is for the audience. After all, you and I wear clothing in our day to day. But what does it mean for our stupid idiot pawns? Well, in RimWorld, clothing has two uses, protecting from temperature and protecting from bullets. Both are common problems out on the rim. When it comes to what clothing is, you can see them as two categories. Clothing, which is lighter and more for keeping pawns warm and cool. Then you got armor, protective gear usually worn on the outer layer of a pawn. Of course, pawns can mix and match clothing so long as the clothing layers don't conflict. For example, you can't have a pawn wearing multiple hats like it's Team Fortress 2 or something. So, how should one pick and choose what to give pawns? Really, it depends on what you are dealing with gameplay-wise. For example, if you plan to survive out in the colder regions, you might focus more on parkas and other warm gear. In a more temperate climate, you might focus more on armor, keeping your pawns alive from gunfire, wild animals, and the occasional fistfight. Stuff like flak armor will protect your pawns, but in return, slow them down. So keep this in mind when picking and choosing the right gear for your pawns. So what are layers? Well, if you look at your equipment, you will see in the description what your gear will cover. For example, a duster will cover the outer layer, it's a jacket of course, it does, but what this means is you can't wear anything on the outer layer without replacing the duster. Like say the flak jacket, both take the outer layer spot. Of course, it being on the outer layer, your pawns can wear stuff underneath, like say a flak vest. Paying attention to layering is important to keeping pawns safe, cause notice the coverage. If a pawn is hit in a spot without coverage, that's damage you could be preventing even a little. So feel free to mix and match clothing out here on the rim, no one's gonna judge you for looking like a modern JoJo character. Hey Bren, next scene. Uh, Bren? Oh no. <laughs> Okay, well that was weird. Oh yeah. Well I sort out some of the wiring. How about you take that time to smash the like button, turn on notifications, and tell us what you like about this video so far. Also maybe support our Patreon. It might actually let us pay someone to fix up the place so that doesn't happen again. Seriously though, thanks everyone who is supporting us. You are super awesome. So how do you know what is the best armor for you? Well, armor protection comes in three types, blunt, sharp, and heat. Each armor gets their own percentage of protection to each type of damage, up to a total of 200% of damage absorption. So stacking similar effects give you better results, whatever. Though when it comes to actually calculating the actual mathematics, rather than having to go over the complicated formula, just know that every layer and damage type, like say a bullet hitting a pawn's chest, the game will calculate for every bit of protection it has to pass through. If you get enough armor for whatever you are dealing with, that's when you get that satisfying tink sound effect indicating the damage was negated. With that out of the way, first up is sharp armor. This armor, as implied, stops sharp damage. This relates to blades, bullets, and the occasional wild dog. All armor has a bit of sharp protection and it halves any sharp damage it will be converted into blunt damage. If you want good sharp protection, then flak armor is where it's at. With the vesting giving a 100% protection rating on the chest, great to keep the vital safe, plus it's cheap enough to mass produce. It in the end game, the power armor choices are great for that kind of protection, be it marine or cataphract gear. Blunt damage, meanwhile, is impact damage. It's great for capturing prisoners, since blunt damage usually won't kill a pawn. Still doesn't mean you want to skimp out on protection for that. Tribals come en masse and usually love to wail on you. If you are dealing with blunt, well, anything that can help for sharp usually will help for blunt, though not as well. This is because blunt damage isn't as common as sharp damage, and outside of mods you won't find any specific items to help against blunt damage. I suppose if you want to make clothing to help with blunt damage though, anything made of devil strand, thrombo fur, and hyperweave do get the best bonus for blunt damage. 
And finally, heat damage. Yeah, there isn't anything specific in RimWorld to deal with heat. The best thing you can do is try not to step into fire because everything you have will try to stop it. But if even one bit of fire damage breaks through, well, you're gonna be recreating the Fantastic Four with your pawns. Yeah, so the more layers you got, the better chance your pawns won't go up in flames. I also recommend Devil Strand for this. It's one of the best materials for making heat resistance clothing. Oh, and to clarify, this is heat damage, not heat temperature resistance. So what about temperature resistance? Well, on top of armor, clothing gives a buff to a pawn's comfortable temperature range. For example, a human pawn on average will have a comfortable range of 78.8 degrees before it goes too hot and pawns begin to feel the heat on them. However, if you give a nude pawn a cloth cowboy hat, that range goes up to 95 degrees. While I don't know how a single cowboy hat can prevent overheating like that, I'm not gonna complain. The inverse is also true. Pawns in the cold gain new clothing like parkas or torques can survive the harshest of colds. Naturally, the more clothing you put on, the more insulation you get against heat or cold. It's pretty self-explanatory, all things considered. Of course, I mentioned cloth in the example of the cowboy hat. Well, there are more than just cloth items. Some materials do their job better than other materials. As a rule of thumb, leathers tend to be tougher and have a better armor bonus while fabrics are better for insulation. The Exceptions to these rules are Thrombofur, Hyperweave, and Devil Strand. These three are the best for an all-around good clothing stats. Be it for armor or temperature, there are better things for some things, but for the best jack-of-all-trades, look no further. There is, of course, quality of apparel. The higher the quality, the better it insulates and protects. Don't need to explain why this is something to keep in mind out on the rim. Now, the biggest issue when it comes to gear is over time, your finely crafted gear is going to get a worn away. Horns don't like that. I don't like that. So what can you do about it? Nothing. Sorry. Unless you got a mod, your gear is just gonna wear away. So how do you mitigate this damage? Well, first, obviously, if you get into fights, pawns will get their stuff damaged. More damage absorbed, the more damage the item will get. Now, even if you have a pawn doing nothing but research, over time, pawn stuff will wear down. It happens, so yeah. Sorry, but your lucky shirt is gonna have to be thrown away eventually. There is, of course, the other issue when pawns have torn up clothing. It makes them bummed out. The worse the health of an equipped clothing item starting at 50% and lower, the worse the mood penalty. Good news, only one item triggers it and keeps the mood, so no stacking a bunch of bad items on a pawn to really get them mad. But do keep this in mind next time you get to pick through the dead for new clothing. Speaking of the dead, tainted clothing, if you take off a piece of gear from a dead body, it's tainted. It doesn't matter if they were blown up, sliced to pieces, or died of a heart attack. If there was a corpse wearing it, it's tainted. Pawns really don't like that, and given there are no washing machines out on the rim, the only pawn who can wear clothing like this are weirdos with bloodlust. Anyone else stacked with debuff for every piece on them. If you don't have a mod to remove taint on an item or salvage old equipment, just go to the crematorium and burn all the apparel. Just remember to set it to only burn tainted gear. Alright, so now that you know the mechanics, what do you use throughout the game? Well, starting out, if you are playing the basic crash-landed start, you will start with Synthread-based clothing. This stuff is great for the early game, but do take this time to hunt down animals and turn that leather into dusters. This is for two reasons, heat protection and regular protection. Plus, put on a cowboy hat and you will look awesome out on the rim when you commit some war crimes. Okay, mid-game, what's next? Well, Oh, flak pants and flak vests are good all-around choices, not burning too much in the way of resources, but this is where Devil Strand becomes your friend. Grow it, turn it in clothing and dusters, and you got gear to keep your pawn safe from a lot of things, plus a nice red color. From here, you have plenty of newer options like going into power armor, the lighter recon or locust armor is pretty neat, but for the resources that are needed for stuff like that, just skip those and go for marine or cataphract armor for the end game. This stuff will make your pawns walking tanks, both in defense and speed, but totally worth it when the hungry pirates won't be breaking down the doors to eat your face. Alright, I suppose there's one last thing to talk about. Given the subject, since we talked about clothing, we need to talk about the one thing everyone has been waiting for. Hardcore nudity. That's right, we are now gonna talk about your pawns and nudity, and to explain this, I'm going to take off my clothing to help demonstrate. 